Hey guys, what's up? Razor here, backing out with another video. And today, I'm going to be discussing, in my opinion, what the best Albedo build is out there. I've seen a lot of videos out there, and some of them range from okay, they're okay, I wouldn't actually say they're that great, to so horrendous, I think they should be considered like a crime. It is so bad. In my opinion, Albedo is actually one of the most free-to-play friendly characters, and I'm going to show you guys how you can actually get the most out of rolling Albedo. And I'll be discussing more in the video why I think he's actually one of the most free-to-play friendly characters out there. So, in this video, we're going to be discussing his stats, some talents, weapon choices, artifact builds I would recommend, constellations, and teammates and strategies you can use to incorporate Albedo into your gameplay. And finally, I have some conclusions on final thoughts on Albedo. Starting into his base stats, Albedo has the highest base defense in the game as of 1.2. He has, he's really high defense. And this is going to become important for when we talk about his transient blossoms in particular and its talents. But keep in mind that this is very important. And also, it's going to be very important that you get Albedo to 90. Levels actually mean a lot for Albedo. There are a lot of people saying that level 80 is only a level 80 is worth it. But in this case, it's not actually true. 90 is what you really want to be aiming for with him. In fact, the weapon is what is actually not important in this case. And also on Ascensions, he gains more Geo Damage bonus, which will actually help him overall in his kit, because you're mostly going to be using him for his Geo Damage. If you're using him for Autos, something is wrong. You're playing him wrong, in my opinion. You should not use that. So, going into the Talents, we have his Normal Attack, which is pretty much bad, to say the least. It's... It's pretty much very vanilla. It doesn't actually do anything. Not even good for his kit because we're not even going to build him into attack. This is not even worth leveling in my opinion. Second, we have his E. And let me let me start by saying this. His E is ridiculously strong. Before I go into it, people underrate the power that his solar isotoma gives. It is really good. So a lot of people that may not understand Albedo is like, so what is exactly does solar isotoma do? Well, I'll uh, let me explain. When you fire off this elemental skill, Albedo will prop down a small field. It's actually not a small field. It's actually a pretty large field. It's about the same radius as Lisa's E ability on the hold. So what it does is it creates a flower in the center. This is actually not important, but as, as more of a meme. But what actually matters is that every two seconds, starting off when you fire it, the cooldown resets when you fire off the Transient Blossom. And I'll discuss this as part of a strategy. It will fire off a Transient Blossom that deals damage based off Albedo's defense and not at all based off his attack, which is why building attack is not really that recommended. And this does AoE Geo damage. While the radius is small, you can still hit enemies and you can actually proc the effect of this Transient Blossom without Albedo actually being on the field. Very much like a support official when you proc Oz. And in fact, it's actually better than Oz in some cases because it can actually deal AoE damage and hit multiple enemies at the same time. And so you also have the elevator and it also deals damage when you apply it. Again, this is my opinion, is one of the best elemental skills that you should level up. It's easily, it's actually ridiculously good. And another part aspect that goes into it is that it will deal geo damage after the character attacks, which means that if you use an elemental, an elemental ability from another element, say for example, Hydro, it will create a Hydro Crystal for you, making your team also much more tanky and offers the defense and keeps constant uptime on these shields, which is something similar to Zhongli, except you actually have good stuff going on, unlike Zhongli. Again, the Transient Blossom is based purely off his defense. No attack is considered, and the scaling is actually ridiculously good. And the skill damage is also fairly solid for how often you can spam this ability. So in terms of spam, you can actually keep this ability on 100% uptime. The duration lasts 30 seconds, and the cooldown only lasts 4. So the, cooldown, the duration is about 7.5 times larger than the cooldown. And that means you could basically constantly keep the effect of this active. Every two seconds, proc another hit, proc another hit. And it's very consistent and actually does a lot of damage if you build them correctly. Now moving on to his elemental burst ability. Albedo fires off a cone of geo damage in front of him. And if you do this while in the field, it will create seven fatal blossoms inside of this field. It is not random. These seven blossoms actually will target enemies if they're in the enemies, but only one. And so... If there are not enough enemies on the field, it will fire off the Fatal Blossoms randomly inside within the field. So what you really want to do with this, to take advantage of this ult, is have enemies actually grouped closer together through a Venti or just have them close with Verse and Hunt. There are many different ways to group them together. 
And so this is how you actually maximize the damage on this. Otherwise, the damage is very spread and does not deal as much. But again, Q is okay, but the E is where his real power comes in. And I will explain further in this video as to why, and hopefully I'm able to convince you. Moving on to his first passive from his ascensions, we have Calcite Might. So what it does is very simple. All you, the transient blossoms will deal 25% more damage when the enemy's HP is below 50%. And this just, just makes your E ability much more stronger and just it's, 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 it just makes him way better of a character. 25% more damage. And this is based off the damage modifier. So it's tacked additively with Geo Damage bonus that he gets from Ascension. So keep that in mind as well. It's not as good as you think, but it's still very, very powerful nonetheless. For him and next we have his second passive homuncular nature very simple ability his q pretty much acts as a utility very so much similar to official's q ability it's not there for the damage it's there for the utility of bringing back oz much as this is for utility as to graze your elemental mastery as to why this is actually good for him in particular for your entire team well like i said crystallize does not affect your elemental reactions as you think it actually allows you to do more combo damage potential because Crystallize doesn't actually absorb the element. Unlike Melt or Vaporize, it doesn't actually mess up ordering. And so you can actually set up good elemental combos to work with Albedo, which also helps you generate more shields, which makes you more tanky and allows you to take more risky plays without getting harmed. Such as from Icicles or from the Abyss Mages that are on there with their annoying aura abilities. It is very much a good ab appreciated ability, especially for doing more damage as well as creating stronger shields. So, very solid passive. These two I could actually consider are constellation level passives. They are very, very, very powerful and not fundamental to Albedo's kit. And finally, we have his overworld passive. We have Flash of Genius. It's very similar to Sucrosis if you've seen it before, except it applies to weapon ascension materials. But for those that don't have Sucrose to understand how it works, essentially, when Albedo, when you use Albedo to craft this weapon ascension materials, he has a 10% chance to receive double. And while Mona has a 25% chance to refund one, Albedo has half the chance, but it gives you essentially three of them. So in my opinion, using Albedo is actually better than using Mona in case you guys were trying to get weapon ascension materials. Even though the rate may seem lower, you get triple the payout for only half the cost. Half the chance. So very, 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 very good. Now that we talked about talents, let's move on. Let's talk about the weapons. So I've seen a lot of debate out there. Whether or not the Festering Desire, which is the new 4-star 1.2 weapon that is offered for free to players, or the Harbinger of Dawn. And I just want to say this, so a lot of people did the math, and a lot I did my own personal checking. Harbinger of Dawn is the best weapon for Albedo, because base attack doesn't actually matter for him. and allows him to maximize damage on his E ability, which is easily ridiculously good, especially for setting up as a support. Because base attack doesn't actually matter because of how the transient blossoms work, it doesn't actually factor in attack at all into your overall damage. So what actually matters is the defense. So base attack, unnecessary. And what the benefit is, there's a very small caveat, but keeping the HP above 90%, the problem is already mitigated by the fact that you're going to play Albedo, you just pop the E and run out. Pop E, pop burst, pop out. Very similar playstyle and deficial, and it makes him a really easy unit and almost always is able to keep up this effect on the weapon so it allows you to actually have better stats than an r5 skyward harp yes better stats than r5 harp it, that is ridiculous when i say it on a three star weapon it is absolutely absurd and allows you to do some crazy damage potential on albedo and is pretty much the best weapon for him not the summit shaper not the, the black sword not any sort of pay to win weapon, not even a four star gotcha weapon. Stuff you can easily get by rolling like five times on the gotcha. This easy three star weapon. And I think you even get a copy from Kaya and the tutorial. Hopefully you didn't burn it because it's actually ridiculously good for him. So now that I discussed the weapon, let's talk about the artifacts, the artifact builds I'd use. And so before I say this, before I'm gonna have a lot of people already tell me, Razor, why the heck are you running Bloodstain? Well, again, I want to stress this. Main stat is better than substat, which is better than the set bonuses. So keep this in mind as you do this. The, the set bonuses are not nearly as good as the, the substats and main stats you'll get, especially when it comes to getting five star artifacts. As for what stats you should be looking for on specific pieces, crit damage on, or crit rate on the hat, it depends on the substats on all of the pieces of gear. So on the other four pieces of gear. So if you have a bunch of crit rate, go with crit damage on the hat and vice versa. If you have a bunch of crit damage, go for crit rate on hat. 
it just you want to balance out that ratio so that it, you do more consistent damage and increase your overall dps and when it comes to subsets overall what you should be looking for is crit rate crit damage both of these have around equal priority and ironically defense percent is what you really want to be looking for as well and followed by energy recharge and then after that you have flat defense as well as am hp is okay for the weapon but it's not necessarily too fantastic because the defense is already gonna be pretty damn good and then attack is a meme it's not actually that important uh because we won't will not build him to be an attack the attack is actually not important for his overall damage so just keep this in mind we have for his cup a geo damage bonus this is this is my personal recommendation for it again same substats apply here crit rate crit damage energy recharge defense there's these are the ones you should be looking for when it comes to his gears and on the hourglass you should be looking for defense percent on the main stat this is actually most important i've seen a lot of builds out there say you should go attack percent no absolutely not go defense you'll end up doing increasing your dps by way more than you think and it's the most part of the most optimal build again same subsets very similar this is pretty much similar to all the pieces again feather is attack obviously flat and fat flower is hp and again same stat set priorities do you solid right there and it's actually pretty easy for him because getting defense is no one really uses defense percent other than him and noel really and so it's not hard when you're farming artifacts to get decent defense pieces when you farm for your other main dps characters you may be looking for so as for set bonuses I, there's a couple of ideas going around out there. There's a four-piece Archaic Petra, two-piece Noblesse, two-piece Petra, and a four-piece Noblesse. In my opinion, with this current build, I would not recommend a four-piece Archaic Petra because there are some caveats with the four-piece Petra. The biggest problem is that you actually have to grab the crystal with Albedo. Another character cannot grab the crystal. It has to be Albedo, the character with the set active. And so, again, and you don't want Albedo to get hit because then you lose the bonus potential of the weapon. And so I don't actually run them in. I actually recommend the two-piece Archaic Petra and two-piece Noblesse or a four-piece Noblesse if you don't want to farm the Petra Domain. That is my recommendation for set bonuses. If you can farm the set bonuses for Albedo, if you want to make him the best as possible you can possibly be. Moving on to constellations for Albedo. And this is when I say Albedo is one of the most free-to-play friendly characters in the entire game for a five-star. Arguably even more free-to-play friendly than Venti. Because unlike Venti, Albedo's constellations really don't do anything at all for him. This this constellation one doesn't actually generate energy unless Albedo himself is active on the field. If as long as Albedo is a sub DPS, which is how he will play, he will not get any bonuses from this ability at all. Moving on to his constellation two, while this does have an effect on your Q ability, his burst, it this is based off of his Q offers more utility than damage in my opinion, and so it's actually not too fantastic it will increase your damage but not as much as you actually think it will be and also mistranslated as in it will only affect your burst damage it will not affect your damage on your ease on your normals it will not affect those just the effect of the ult the more stacks you have the more ult damage you do it is it is a decent one but it's definitely not worth going for for the build we're actually going for whereas especially for free to play cheap to play players if they should go for this his constellation level 3 is easily his best constellation, but again, it increases his very good Soul Rise mobility by 3. Nothing much to say. It is, it is honestly his best constellation, but it's still not worth going for as a cheap to play player. It is not needed. You can still do very good damage without it. So, moving on to his constellation 4, it's a meme. Let's move on. Nani! Constellation level 5 increases his damage. Again, utility damage. It's not as good as you think it is, but it's there for the EM potential for supporting other characters. Again, it's okay, but I would not spend money on this. And finally, Constellation Level 6 is actually not as good as what you think it is, uh, since this is damage that's additive with your damage bonuses. So if your characters already have high damage, like, for example, a child with a rust with higher damage bonus, normal attack, this will very marginally increase the damage. And not only that, it's going to marginally increase Albedo's damage. It's not by much. At most, you'll get at like a thousand extra damage off this. It's very little bonus you actually get from this. It is very overrated of an ability. And even I got fooled by it because I didn't understand damage calculation at the time. So, again, this is definitely not needed for him at all. And now that we discuss constellations and why I think he should be, he's a very free to play friendly character because he doesn't rely on constellations, we're going to finally at last talk about some team building strategies for him. Albedo, 
He's a very good sub DPS. I would treat him like Fischl in this case, as well as I would put a healer for him to keep his passive active. A very good free to play friendly build. Instead of Jean, you pop out Noel. The reason why you swap out Noel is if you, you generate a shield that allows Alberto to heal as well and allows Alberto to become, especially with the new buff to Geo Shields, it allow Alberto to play much more safe when it comes to applying his E ability and getting the effect off very well as well as creating an elemental resonance that increases Albedo's transient blossom damage because of the Geo Resistance Down. And Geo Resistance Down is really good for Albedo to increase his overall DPS, as well as making the shields just straight up stronger, as well as overall damage increase, as long as you have that shield up. And another character that's really good is Fischl, actually, because Fischl will constantly apply electro damage to enemies, and it will trigger the crystallized reaction quite frequently, which allows you to have be more tanky as well as just deal more damage as well as pairing up with a character like Jing Cho for the electro charge build or child you in, with Albedo in tandem with Albedo's Q ability with the passive it generates a lot of elemental mastery for both characters to allow them to do strong electro charge damage but this can also be applied to any he pretty much synergizes well with a lot of characters but at least the healer I would actually highly recommend going with either Jean, Barbara, Noel or Chi Chi. Bennett is actually not as good as you think because Bennett only recovers HP up to 70%, which is not good because of the weapon requires 90% HP. Some very good strategy you may consider is for the fact that when we pop Albedo's E ability, it actually resets the cooldown of the two seconds. So if you hit an enemy and put down a new E ability and then hit again, you will proc the Transient Blossom twice, effectively doubling your damage. And it allows you to do up to like 30k damage in about one second. It is a very powerful ability. And again, super free to play friendly to do. And now I'm going to quickly discuss a, go over a quick demo to show you guys what Albedo is truly capable of. So I have prepared some test subjects. We have some treasure hoarders for you guys. And so this is world level 8, so they should be fairly high leveled. And Abyss offers buffs, so I just want to show you. These guys are level 90, same level as me. So we pop E, and then we attack. Um, that one didn't crit, because we don't have the bonus, so we just got, and then there, 11,000 damage. And we just, we just get some healing up. And now that we have the bonus, now that we have the bonus, as you can see here, oh, we don't. Okay, uh, Kappa, just kidding. Just kidding. We just quickly get it up real quick, power off Gene. We pop E, and then we go in, hit, and then what we can do again is then hit, press E, and then hit again. As you can see, I did around 26k with this. And obviously, as you, if you use, you're not supposed to use Albedo this way. You're supposed to pop out of him and switch to another character and generate those shields that protect Albedo. So again, just run boom, boom. I've, my crit rate is not exactly as high as I want it to be, but... And that's what I was I mean for when I'm farming artifacts for him. But as you see, I didn't crit again because I'm bad. But now I'm going to pop this and then pop it again. Kind of a bad showcase, but uh, I will be posting a Albedo showcase where I actually do a, bis, a whole abyss 9 through 12. I do not use the Harbinger of Dawn on him. I use the Black Sword instead. But I actually think the Harbinger of Dawn will do much better than, than the Black Sword is. So some final conclusions about Albedo is that he is a very, very, very free-to-play friendly character. A lot of characters work well with him, and it's very easy to play him, and honestly, he's a very, very fun character. If I had to put him on, on a tier list, I would put him at A, if not possibly for free-to-play players, at S, because how easy it is to build him to be a very solid DPS for your team, and he can just make the game, he can allow you to do more damage, he can allow you to create shields that make you more tanky, and he's just overall such an amazing character. And I think a lot of people are building him wrong and misunderstanding how he plays. And I'm, I'm, hopefully this allows you guys to understand how he works and make you, maybe allow you to do, have more fun using this character if you manage to pull copy at them. And another, finally, one thing I want to say is another reason why he is such a free-to-play friendly character is that the banner that he's on currently right now is very, very good. It has Fischl, it has Bennett, and it has Sucrose. Unlike Venti's banner, all three of them, only one of them was free and only for a limited time, unlike the other, unlike Venti's banner where you had Barbara and Sean Ling, which are both free. All three characters are very good. Fischl at Constellation level 6 is an entirely different character than, con than any other Constellation. It is so good, so powerful, and so rolling on this banner is actually very, it's actually very good. For, for a new player, I would, I would consider summoning on this banner. 
I don't mean to overhype a character, but I, I, I promise you guys, you will not regret running Albedo. He is very, very cheap to play friendly and will work very well for you even at low constellations when it comes to clearing Abyss and other content in this game. His potential is massive and I really, really, really want to state how good of a character he is. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me for this video. If you guys like the content, if you guys could leave a like, comment, and subscribe on the video, it would greatly appreciate me and help the channel out a lot as it helps people find my channel and help find the video as YouTube algorithm is all course of whack. Many of you are aware and I, I appreciate all your guys' support. And also, I do stream on twitch.tv slash ragingninjas on my Twitch. And feel free to leave a follow. Link will be on the description. And I do all my gameplay. I do all my testing on here. And if you guys want to hear a lot of stupid math and a lot of stupid memes, please feel free to check me out. And anyways, guys, that's going to be it for my video. I know it's been 20 minutes and probably too long, but hopefully I'm able to explain why I think this is such a good build on Albedo and why he's actually really good characters and why a lot of YouTube videos got it wrong and how you can have a lot of fun with this character. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying 1.2 and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.